you canned because you had to have the food. Uh, we had a big garden. Now it's not the necessity that it once was. A lot of people are doing food preservation because they're concerned about what goes in their food. Um, wanting to have some control over their, their food that they preserve. The only two safe ways to can are in the boiling water bath canner where the temperature reaches 212 for fruits, uh, tomatoes, pickles, jams and jellies and other preserves or in the pressure canner for your vegetables, meats, poultry and seafood. Jars come in all different sizes. The ones we're using today, these are um, pints. Um, they come in quart sizes too. So the process of actually Filling the jars is the same either way for using the water bath canner or the pressure canner. So we're going to walk you through those steps with tomatoes today. So the tomato, uh, to get the skin off, we're I'm going to put it in the hot water. I have boiling water here. I'm going to put it in and just leave it in there until the skin starts to crack. Can everybody see? Okay, so you can see how it's all cracking. Can everybody see that? And I'll put it right into the ice water. And I just want to leave it in there long enough so that it cools so that I can handle it. So we'll take the skin off. You can see it slips right off now. You can do whole tomatoes, half tomatoes, or quartered tomatoes. So we're quartering them just so we can pack them into the jar a little bit better. Tomatoes are considered an acidified food because tomatoes fall right at that 4.6. We're going to use a tablespoon of bottled lemon juice. The bottled lemon juice has the correct amount of acidity it's uniform, consistent, whereas a raw lemon wouldn't be. For a quart jar, we need two tablespoons. And then we just fill the jar. Leaving a half an inch of headspace. Headspace is real critical that you leave the amount that they say, because that influences the process. So I'm pressing on them, and you can see that a lot of their own, its own juice is coming up, and that's fine, that's good. I packed them in there pretty tight, so there might be some good air bubbles in there. Sense. Sometimes when you're packing vegetables in, you can get like big air, air bubbles and spaces that will result in, in a whole lot of air at the top of the jar and that's, that's undesirable. So we want to make sure we get our bubbles out. So I'm just kind of going around the sides and pushing them out of the way and see if I can release any big air bubbles. That looks pretty good. I'm going to wipe my rim. So nothing will interfere with the sealing compound. So the lids aren't usually hot when you, when, once you get them out of the hot water, you just don't want to stick your hand in the hot water. And then when you close your lid, you want to finger tighten it. That's it, okay? You don't want to wrench it on there. You don't want to call your husband and have your <laughs> muscle lid on there. You don't want to use that jar wrench because you do want some air to escape while it's in the canner. Um, and what happens if, it, if the ring is on there too tight, the lid will buckle, and that's a very common question that we get when people make something. They say, why did all my lids buckle? And it's because they were probably sitting there really tightening them. Now, we want at least an inch above the jars, but we also need enough space so that it can get to a rolling boil. So this one, I may actually boil it for a little. The second way that it's safe to can is with a pressure canner. And you can already see there's a difference in what the pressure canner looks like versus uh, a stock pot or the boiling water bath canner. So boiling water temperatures won't kill the botulism. A pressure canner reaches 240 degrees and it has a lid with a gasket and that gasket is essential to give the um, uh, tight seal that's necessary for steam to build up in the kettle. The boiling water bath just reaches 212 degrees. The pressure canner reaches 240 degrees. And that's the temperature that's necessary to kill the Clostridium botulinum spores that can cause the deadly uh, foodborne illness botulism. This is the gasket, and you want to be sure that it's nice and flexible. Uh, every canning season, check your gasket. If it's become brittle, it needs to be changed out. But uh, if it's just a little um, less flexible, you can spray some vegetable cooking spray on it. So when you're getting ready to can, just like Renee had all her things ready, you fill the jars in the same way, and there's a little, there's a little channel that this fits in, and it comes down hard and pulls tight so that you have a really tight seal. Turn the heat up, and you see what's beginning to happen? Can you see this air shooting up? Mm -hmm. this, okay. That's driving the air out of the canner and allowing steam to build up inside. This is what we call venting the uh, canner. So you've got, once this starts shooting out just straight up, 
start counting for 10 minutes. That's an important step in canning. Vent the canner for 10 minutes, then close it up after the 10 minutes, and you'll begin to see the pressure start to rise. When the pressure gets to the 12 pounds, then you start counting your time. So if it's green beans, it's going to be 25 minutes at 12 pounds pressure. If it's corn, it's going to be a lot longer at 12 pounds pressure. But this step of venting has to be done for 10 minutes for the air to be driven out and steam to, to build up. Okay, then you cap it, watch the pressure start building up. And usually what I do is I let the pressure go to about 8 pounds pressure. It'll start rising fairly quickly. And then I'll start playing around with the stove eye to adjust it so that eventually it will work on up to 12 pounds pressure and I just keep working with this until it stays on 12 pounds pressure. But I have to be right here in the kitchen watching that in case it does fluctuate. Now with the weighted gauge, like some of y'all said, you may have where it has a little dial that you put the dial on here and there's a little hole at 15 pounds and that goes right on there and it'll climb up to 15 pounds pressure. And you'll begin to hear a little jiggle. When it jiggles two or three times a minute, that means it's reached 15 pounds pressure. So you could be in the next room and hear that and know that it's okay. Whereas with this, you need to be right here watching it. So one of the advantages of the dial gauge is you can see the pressure build up, but you have to be right there to see it. The advantage of the others, you could be in the next room and just hear it. And then you time it for that 25 minutes or whatever the food requires. Then you take this off the eye at the end of the processing time, and the pressure will just gradually drop down to zero. Don't open up the lid until then because you could get badly burned. When the pressure drops down to zero, you can take the little cap off again, and there shouldn't be any more of that steam coming out. Then you can unlock it and set your jars over on a wooden cutting board or, or a towel to cool down.